Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from uh, our good friend, Professor Tony Lenton. And this is a book he's been working on for some time. It's a biography and it's Mr Justice McCarty, 1869 to 1933. Tony has given it um, a title, Rebel, Reformer and Rogue Judge. The book's been published by Cambridge Scholars Publishing and Elizabeth and I have given it a title for our book review, St George in a Wig, a new biography of a judicial maverick. Now this is the book here, there's a picture of him. There we go at the front. There's the spine. And then you can see Anthony Lenton, Professor Tony Lenton on the back with a little bit of blurb. Now it's a hard back as you can see. It's got a dust cover, there's nothing on the inside back or the front, but it, it has got uh, in, in what is just over 200 pages, a great deal in it. This is actually the main index. It's very well structured. It's done by page numbering, so you should be able to find things quickly, depending on what you're looking for. A lot of people are mentioned in this book. Um, people that, that you will have heard of probably from uh, legal history. There's a selected bibliography again at the back and he's used newspapers, periodicals, and a wide range of, uh, of sources. And then there are notes at the back. If we go to the front of the book, there's the actual f first page there. Then we get, this is the main front page, which you can see there. Then we get to um, some, that, that's the basic blurb. Tony has dedicated this to Louis Bloom Cooper, which I thought was very nice, very nice of him to do. There is the um, another basically formal um, portrait of McCarty or Mac, as many of us will probably um, tend to refer to him. There are the various chapter headings, and then there are lots of illustrations throughout the book. Um, Again, then a lot of acknowledgements. Huge amount of work has gone into this. And there is, I'll just start with this one because many of you won't have seen it, but in um, the Inns of Court, Middle Temple, there is a bust. And there it is there. And it says, a forgotten bust, a judge dimly recalled. It's there, but it doesn't say who he is. And we'll talk about that again in a minute. Um, then I'll, that's the preface. And really the reasons why Tony has written this book. Then after that you get um, Introduction in Search of McCarty. And he then writes what I think is an extremely meticulous, well-researched uh, book about a judge who has actually um, largely been ignored and one actually, it's surprising in some ways that he's been ignored but not in others for a variety of reasons. But this book, I think, is an excellent read. And let me say a little bit about what the book contains. As I say, we have a title, St George in a Wig. And you'll understand a bit more about that from some of the judgments that he produced. We start by saying, how fleeting is the fame of judges? Well known one day and consigned to obscurity the next. A mere footnote in legal history. Hmm, happened to many judges, of course. Such seems to have been the faint, faint, fate of Mr Justice McCarty, who, if Anthony Lenton's latest biography is anything to go by, <clears throat> was an especially notable and fiercely controversial judge. And certainly he was. Um, he was a High Court judge from 1916 to 1933. And McCarty was a household word in his day a towering figure around whom clouds of controversy continually swirled. Almost like Lord Denning in the latter half of the 20th century, the name of McCarty has undergone a sad eclipse, as evidenced rather poignantly by his um, bronze portrait bust in the Queen's Royal Middle Temple, um, which inexplicably bears no plaque which identifies him. I hope by doing this review, if we do anything else, that that wrong might be righted. You never know. Also, it seems that there is no mention of him in recently published History of Middle Temple book, which he was a member. 
Perhaps these oversights will eventually be redressed with the publication of this work by Lenton. Now, this particular judicial biography grew out of an entry on Mr Justice McCarty, which the author was asked to write for the Oxford Dictionary of National uh, Biography. And a startling journey it has obviously been for Tony Lenton. Lawyers, academics and general readers interested in all things judicial and their effects on social change will be especially fascinated. I certainly have been. I've remembered McCarty from the past. Um, I'm a little bit surprised at the fact he's been so ignored and obviously that, that has been put right. Now this St George in a wig quote is quite an interesting one because McCarty was both lauded and denounced for his iconoclasm, uh, says the author, notably on his insistence that the law must move with the times. Now that's an important point in terms of, if you like, his judicial mission. He deplored outdated laws and precedents which fell to him to administer, and as the author also observed, he strove not merely to make the law comply with precedents, but beyond that, to make it answer the needs of the day. Now, that's basically what Denning did, in, I would suggest, and quite a few other judges. It certainly happened, and has been happening, in the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council on such matters as the death penalty. So you can see that there are mechanisms that can be used when, in fact, the views, the changing social views of the time, uh, need to be um, modernised. And there is, of course, the well-known expression, um, today's dissenting judgment is tomorrow's good law. Now, that doesn't always happen, but it is certainly worth thinking about. Judicial creativity, of course, like this, manifests in public statements widely reported in the press, incurring fury with a large cross-section of society, scandalised by it. And their examples, McCarty's heretical views on mid-Victorian divorce laws, abortion, contraception and eugenics. The Daily Express called him a St George in a wig, a champion of women's rights who turned his bench into a pulpit for women's causes. No wonder McCarty was popular with some and vilified by many others as a judicial maverick and rogue judge. And of course, when you take this point um, concerning things such as divorce laws, we've got exactly the same thing happening in 2017, with views being put forward about no-fault divorce, views being put forward that a lot of these family matters should not be in the court system at all, and so forth. So you can see arguments being put forward. And of course, tags like judicial maverick and rogue judge don't really help matters because it's, it's just throwing a bit of mud at him, putting it bluntly. But they do these things, they do these things, and they do it to me and everybody else, so get over it is the answer. But other voices, of course... Uh, concerning McCarty, like that of the Manchester Guardian, predicted that history will give Henry McCarty his place in the succession of the great common law judges of England. Well, that hasn't really happened in quite that way, although I think it would be nice to and be flattering to think that he's had and did have, um, as a person, quite an influence. And I think, frankly, that's really what Lenton has come out with here in this book, that the influence is there. And in fact, from a jurisprudential point of view, that's probably a very good thing because the judges are not there. I know Lord Reed said that they were to make law, but the bottom line on all of this is interpretation. But judges are there certainly to give their views. They gave them on uh, the whole issue of whether Parliament should have a, sh have a say on um, whether uh, we should be the EU. Um, European Union or not. So you can see that these issues are good. The Supreme Court obviously putting forward a particular view. The whole court doing so in that instance. Now, my final comments are, and this is with, obviously Elizabeth wrote most of this, but we did discuss this book in a lot of detail. We gave our last little subhead, Fatal Flaws, because this is the problem. In all, Anthony Lenton paints a vivid picture of a courageous judge much ahead of his time. That certainly is the case. An assiduous scholar, McCarty was also known, um, well known as a Latinist, who, for instance, founded the Horatian Society, which even now continues to attract devotees of Horace, and they have an annual dinner, which is a splendid occasion. It is also, it is only then, 
when you get to the penultimate chapter of this book that you discover the personal flaws and failings that led to McCarthy's, uh, McCarthy's eventual ruin. Because unknown to most of his contemporaries at that time, McCarthy was a compulsive gambler and he kept two mistresses. One of them bore him a son, of whom he was very fond, but to whom he never admitted paternity. Eventually, debt-ridden and penniless, he ended his own life. For details, read this book, which the author has copiously uh, researched using many original sources. I have to say a sad end. Um, and unfortunately, as I say this, um, other instances have occurred. This one was effectively covered up. The result, of course, of the book itself, notwithstanding all these other flaws and all these other difficulties, it's an absorbing narrative which fills in any number of blanks in the story of Mr Justice McCarty, Henry McCarty, and which therefore makes, I think, an important contribution to English legal history. And I'm sure over the centuries, um, as we build up these books um, on a judicial biography, the, the role of English legal history will, will be enhanced because it's really great to see the way they judged at particular times in history and how history judges them later on. The publication date is cited at 2016 and all I would say to our friend Tony Lenton is thank you so much indeed Tony for this. It's a great book and I hope a lot of people read it. Just show you the middle part of it. There are uh, this is a famous figure of our English life, celebrity and its pitfalls. That's an interesting point in its own right, because again, not that many judges are that have celebrity status. It's become more apparent recently. You can see that there are footnotes. Um, there's not that much, but there are some very useful um, photographs, and there's one with him, with his son and his mistress. Well, thank you very much indeed to all concerned for this book. It's a touching book. Um, it's a sad book for me. Uh, I, I was aware of what had happened to McCarty before I read this book, but it's answered a lot of questions. And I had read about this from Burkitt's biography, so at least I had some idea of what this book is about because of the fact that they were contemporaries. Thank you very much to all concerned, though, for an excellent book. Bye-bye.